So I'm rocking a iPhone 13 Pro Max and it is kind of old, but after watching that Apple event and seeing that 16 Pro Max, I'm pretty positive I'm gonna be ordering that. As a videographer here in Indiana, I wanted to share my thoughts on all those new features that Apple has been adding to their iPhones. Let's just get into it. So first, let's talk about this side button that they added to those iPhones. And to be quite honest with you, it seems like a little thing, but as you realize how you're holding iPhone whenever you take photos or pictures, if you are filming the correct way, which is the opposite, the backside camera, which is so much more than the frontside camera of megapixels and just quality so much better, it just, just so makes sense to have this on the side you all you do is just click the button you hold it the right way so it doesn't matter if you take in the photo like they showed on the video just by pressing the button but also if you are shooting vertically you just simply press this little button on the side and you start stop recording taking photos all sorts of things i feel like that is a fantastic addition to the iphone but not only that one of the coolest things that they showed is a haptic feedback button so any camera that you have like let's say dslr or a mirrorless camera when you slightly pre-press that button it will focus or pre-focus on that subject that you're trying to shoot and from what they show if you hold that pre-press button it actually locks a actual focus on your subject which is absolutely amazing because i cannot tell you how many times I've been shooting something on iPhone and it loses the actual tracking of the face of the talent. So that's an amazing addition. And plus the whole deal with swiping left, right, that is actually going to allow you to customize it. And I cannot wait to see what camera apps like Final Cut camera and Blackmagic camera apps will utilize that particular button. Uh, that's going to be exciting. So next, so applications just like creators app or monitor and control app for sony i can simply control and see what exactly i'm filming i don't know if you can see it here but every single time i'm using this application i can monitor everything that i see on this display and during bright summer days when you're shooting outside this is essential to have a 2000 nit displays some of the displays that are external cannot even get to that brightness which that will be absolutely helpful i'm very very excited to see that bright of a display on the iphone and integration of those apps i'm going to make a whole nother video about this application the actual creators app and monitoring and control app for sony's those are an amazing tool for the video creators Sound is huge for the projects. Video projects, you have to have a clear and nice, rich sound. With them showing some of the data that is gonna be collected, and I really hope that there's gonna be a metadata that the iPhones will collect, and whenever you transfer the footage to your NLE, to your software where you're gonna be editing everything, that you can actually modify and do the, all the background changes and background removal of the noise. And I talked about in DaVinci Resolve new features that you can actually play around with this AI enhanced features. Now I'm super excited to see that implemented in those just everyday phones. Speaking of that data transfer and just collecting data, I'm excited to actually try the uh, Apple Log. I never tried it just simply because it's a 13 uh, Pro Max and I skipped all the other, you know, iPhones, all the announcements are just not interesting to me. For me, it was plenty, 13 Pro Max was enough, but now I'm kind of curious because everybody talking about a set, so many videos where they showing how you color grade the log, Apple log, ProRes, Apple ProRes is going to be another thing that I want to start playing around with. And I'm very interested to see how, since Color Space Transform has an Apple Log profile, I'm kind of curious how to actually color grade not only in uh, DaVinci Resolve, but also in Final Cut Pro, because I was a Final Cut Pro user. And I'm going to be showing you all those little things and how the workflow works. And if I find something interesting in the next videos, so stay tuned for that. The next feature that I'm excited about, and obviously the AI, 
not only I love using ChatGPT for replying to emails, because obviously English is not my first language and I have some struggles to reply to a professional emails and sounding professional. And with Apple intelligence that they added to that phone, I can do it on the fly. I don't have to actually get on my computer, trying to connect everything, trying to edit stuff. So the next things that they added to that iPhone is the cameras. Previously, iPhone had just that main camera. I think it's 24 millimeters on there, just a straight on plain camera, like that number one when you actually open up the camera app. The wide angle lens was good, but not as good that, as that main one. So with 48 megapixel that they added to the wide angle lens, which is, I think, do believe it's 13 millimeter equivalent, which is great to see. And especially talking about the lens quality and quality in general, they added a 4K 120 slow motion and they even made this kind of like blockbuster joke about like, hey, walk slowly because it's cinematic. We need a slow-mo, that's gotta be cinematic. So that was, that was actually pretty cool and funny that they actually made a little sketch off of it. So one thing that absolutely grind my gears when I was filming with the iPhone 13 or any other iPhones, you can absolutely tell that it is an iPhone when you see the footage and you're shooting like at nighttime or low light and you have some bright lights or light bulbs or whatever and it's directing to the lens you can definitely see those little like annoying ghosting little you know reflections from the actual glass of the camera which i'm i highly doubt that they changed something about it i'm pretty sure it's still there when they were shooting that weekend music video you cannot see anything but who knows maybe they were specifically were shooting a specific angle to avoid showing that there's still like those annoying ghosting of the lights reflections so moving on to the next one apple store website the one thing that i notice is they only have one terabyte for the storage and by knowing if you're shooting the, the log and you're shooting 120 4k 120 it's gonna take a lot of space i'm pretty positive those files will be huge and obviously they finally got everything changed to Thunderbolt, not even Thunderbolt, it's just USB-C. Thank goodness that they got terrorized by Europe to switch to USB-C. I honestly am so tired of that Apple Lightning. It's just everything, like even my iPad that I had for probably like a year and a half or so has USB-C. Everything else has USB-C. The iPhones and iPads Pro still had that stupid lighting cable. Thank goodness that's, that's gone. And the transferring speeds to connected SSD and save space that way. But I'm still not sold that you're gonna be running around with your iPhone and you wanna film something, you have to carry with yourself an SSD. That's just a little bit difficult to see. But in that video that they shot with Weekend that the guy had this cage on the phone holding have like handles on the side and obviously they were connected with ssd external ssd also i will definitely compare iphone to the pocket 3 which by the way i'm actually filming on the pocket 3 and fx30 for just future videos of comparison of the quality of these two which is i don't know it's silly to compare but still pocket 3 it was just a big deal this whole year i start slowly but steady appreciate the pocket 3 and uh, wanted to see how this stacks up or iphone 16 pro max stacks up with the pocket 3 compare the quality of those images i'm very very curious how it's gonna look like but those are the features those are the things like a little rant that i had to just you know share with you guys what uh, was exciting for me personally as a videographer so in the comments below let me know if you are picking up the iPhone 16 Pro Max or Pro. I'm curious to hear your thoughts or maybe some of the features that are I missed. Just uh, share with us. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and uh, stay awesome, my friends, and I will see you in the next video. See ya.